Miranda from the Pituitary Foundation and uh, in today's video we're going to be discussing osteoporosis and bone health and um, what you can do to prevent it and what the causes of it are. Um, so I'm joined today by Sarah. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, hello. Um, I'm Sarah Leyland. I'm an osteoporosis specialist nurse and I work as a clinical advisor with the Royal Osteoporosis Society. Great, thank you. Um, so should we kick off with uh, a quick overview of what osteoporosis is? Yes, so osteoporosis is a bone condition um, and it uh, affects the bones so that they become weaker, uh, they break more easily, and it's the fractures or broken bones that lead to the symptoms, the pain, the problems, and sometimes disability that are, we associate with a condition. Okay, great. Um, so what are the kind of signs and symptoms that people can look out for? in terms of osteoporosis yes. and bone health? Well, osteoporosis doesn't give you any signs or symptoms unless you break anything. Sometimes this is a misunderstanding. People get aches and pains and then they find they've got osteoporosis and they think the two are linked, but you only get pain when you have a fracture. So often uh, a sign might be that you've got a spinal fracture. So you might notice you've lost height, you might have back pain, you might have some curvature of the spine. Um, and uh, that could be a sign that, that you have had one of those fractures and that would be a, an alert really to go and have an investigation. Okay, so how is it then diagnosed? Well, there is a technical um, diagnosis and, and that's made by having something called a DEXA scan, a bone density scan. Um, and if your bone density is significantly lower than the average, uh, then you're diagnosed with osteoporosis, certainly in later life. So it's particularly relevant for postmenopausal women um, and older men. Um, sometimes you might be diagnosed with bones being weaker uh, because they've noticed these spinal fractures and clearly your bones have lost strength um, and there's no other underlying condition. So you, you don't always have to have a scan, but there, but there is this kind of technical standard diagnosis. Great. And um, so lots of people watching this video have a pituitary condition. So is there a particular link between osteoporosis and pituitary conditions? Yes, there can be. Uh, one of the things we know is that our bones are, are kept strong by the sex hormones that are circulating in the system. And as you all will know probably better than me, uh, there are many uh, pituitary conditions which can have an effect on levels of sex hormone and can in fact decrease sex hormone levels. Uh, so thinking there perhaps of something like acromegaly, some kind of non-cancerous growth or tumour which can set up problems with, with hormones. Um, and uh, the other thing is something like um, a condition that affects our cortisol levels. So if we get, have very high levels of cortisol, we know that too can have a negative effect on bones. So I'm thinking here of something like Cushing's, uh, that too. Um, can be a risk factor for osteoporosis. And then there are conditions that affect um, the thyroid gland. So high level circulating levels of the thyroid hormone or parathyroid hormone. So yeah, absolutely. There are conditions that um, can have these effects. Um, and also I was just gonna mention um, some of the treatments for conditions. Um, if you're on um, a condition, if you're on a treatment like glucocorticoids, steroids, then that too can uh, increase your risk of osteoporosis. Okay, yeah, so lots of people with adrenal insufficiency would take hydrocortisone, for example. Does that make a difference if it's replacing the natural hormone rather than on top of? Absolutely, that's a really good point to make. Uh, if you're having a replacement hormone and bringing you back to sort of normal levels, then that isn't of a concern, that isn't concerning. Um, and I think, yeah, yeah absolutely. So ha if you've got questions about that, obviously talk to your healthcare practitioner, um, but you certainly should be, in the same position as everyone else so not to worry there. Great, I think that's reassuring. <laughs> um, okay, so I think the biggest question everyone wants to know is what they can do to protect their bones, um, their particular exercises, lifestyle things, what can they do? Yes, really good. Um, a, a nice positive approach. Everyone can do something to try and, well, for building bones in earlier life, but keeping them strong and even possibly promoting bone strength if you've got osteoporosis. So yes, you mentioned exercise, really important to keep physically active. We know that there are certain 
types of exercise that are particularly good for bones. And that is, first of all, what we call weight bearing exercise with a bit of impact behind it, force. So, um, you know, if you are able to do a bit of jogging, low level jumping, skipping, that kind of thing is going to give extra um, push and force to the bones and, and, the, and the bones like that. Secondly, what we call resistance exercise, muscle resistance exercise. So that's strengthening the muscles, the muscles pull on the bones and that helps to keep them strong. And we now know that if you are well and fit, then if you can build up your levels of muscle resistance, um, muscle strengthening exercise and that's really good for bones so that's the two types of exercise the other thing is as we get older we need to keep our balance good so that we don't fall over uh, because some of the fractures uh, with osteoporosis are really related to a fall so something like a hip fracture in later life so balance is, is really important so that's exercise and then a good well-balanced healthy diet so that you get all the nutrients your bones need with adequate amounts of calcium so that's around 700 milligrams of calcium every day um, and enough protein because sometimes particularly older people don't get enough protein um, and then the other thing to mention is um, vitamin d which we get from sensible exposure to sunlight well we should be getting it about now so certainly in the summer months um, and if you can't get normal exposure to sunlight either because of a medical condition or you simply aren't able to go out then consider taking a Vitamin D supplement that gives you around 10 micrograms, 400 international units every day. And in fact, during the winter months, and certainly many of us during the pandemic, there's been an encouragement to think about taking vitamin D because that helps us to absorb the calcium, helps keep our bones strong. And then other lifestyle things really, I mean, it ties in with lots of conditions really, which is good news. I mean, preventing other conditions. Uh, so think about uh, not smoking. Uh, we know it, it has a negative effect on bones excessive amounts of alcohol. Um, so these, these are also important for bones too. So I think, yeah, I mean, taking that kind of general healthy approach to your bones, it's, it's one more thing that we need to be thinking about and doing that throughout life really. Um, and, and that includes people who've got osteoporosis and not to be fearful, you can't exercise if you've got osteoporosis because you can. And we've got lots of information at the Royal Osteoporosis Society on our website, videos, fact sheets and are really happy to talk things through on our helpline if you want to know what's right for you. Great okay and you mentioned vitamin D there are there any other supplements you'd recommend we have quite a lot of questions about that. I th yeah I think the general approach is to try and get what you can first and foremost from your diet um, um, that's with other things people do seek out supplements and, 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 and feel that they, that they are necessary. Things like magnesium, things like vitamin K. I think the current research tells us that we don't know whether you need to take extra and it's much better to try and get it from your diet if you can. Um, if you've got osteoporosis, then many times they will give you a calcium vitamin D supplement just to be on the safe side. That's really just to supplement the diet if it's not adequate and to make sure you're getting enough. Most of us um, shouldn't need to be taking multiple supplements. Okay. Um, and also, presumably, with um, conditions like Cushing, one of the key things is managing that condition. Um, Abs yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I think the top message here, particularly for those who feel they're at risk because of their condition, is that if you are getting your condition well managed and getting things you know, back to normal as far as possible, then um, that means that your bones will automatically be better too. And that's really the best approach. Um, yes, as you get older, um, yes, if, if you're still at risk and um, you know, then you may need further assessment. And indeed there are drug treatments for osteoporosis, but I think the general approach for most people is not to rush off and get a DEXA scan, seek a medical treatment, but get your pituitary condition managed and then you'll be taking the best um, approach you can to looking after your bone health too. Yeah. So um, should pituitary patients see a bone specialist or would their endocrinologist be able to manage that? Many, well, I think it really depends on the individual. Many endocrinologists, uh, or certainly some, do have a particular interest in bone health. So they will be considering all these things. Um, if they don't, then referring you to usually to a rheumatologist uh, would be the probably the most the best approach. 
Um, uh, but as I say, good communication between different specialists is, 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 is how it often is. And uh, I certainly know of many endocrinologists who have a specific interest. It, it depends where you are. Uh, in some regions, there will be a lead clinician who's got an interest in osteoporosis and they may come from a variety of disciplines. It might be endocrinology, might be rheumatology. There might be a metabolic bone specialist. So uh, it really depends on, on, on where you are. Lovely. Um, so in terms of treatments, if you do have osteoporosis or deteriorating bone health, do you want to talk us through some of the treatments available? Yes. Um, yeah, as I say, mostly they are given to older people because we know that our bones, as well as lower, the bone density getting lower, the, the quality of our bone deteriorates as we get older. And that's the time they, and fractures then become much more likely. That's the time they tend to treat. Uh, there's a group of drugs called bisphosphonates, which are the most likely drugs to be used. Um, a drug called alandronic acid, which is a simple tablet that you take once a week. Um, and and the, uh, bisphosphonates can come as, a, as an infusion, as a drip as well. Um, and there are other drugs, uh, the drug drug called denusinab, raloxifene. Uh, we now have some what we call anabolic bone building drugs, teraparatide, uh, which is a type of parathyroid hormone, interestingly, that you get a little dose of that every day. Uh, particularly if you've got many spinal fractures, more severe osteoporosis, they might be available. Um, and occasionally hormone replacement therapy is used generally. So it can be used if you have early menopause um, as a replacement, or it might be used as a treatment, particularly between about 50 and 60, actually to treat osteoporosis. That's when the benefits you know, particularly outweigh any kind of adverse health risks. So yes, a whole range of treatments available. Um, and uh, usually they would give them for at least five years, but sometimes like much, much longer than that. So mm -hmm. yes, with osteoporosis got questions, uh, do come to the charity, to the Osteoporosis Society and have a chat about that if you want to know more. Okay, and so with those treatments, are there any that can sort of repair, do they repair damage that's already happened with a condition like Cushing's or is it just preventative? Well, I think the, the drug treatments certainly do strengthen bone um, and the, the research has shown us that they reduce the risk of fractures and that's for any, you know, whether you've got multiple fractures already. Um, yes, they may improve bone density, um, but, but I think the important thing is that they have overall been shown to strengthen bones sufficiently for you to be much less likely to break bones and that's what the aim is really that's the aim of the treatment so yeah definitely uh, um, an important option if you're someone who's got what's called a high fracture risk and that's something you can discuss with your clinician or healthcare professional okay okay i think that's just about it um do you have one kind of key takeaway message for anyone um, watching this I think I have two, um, both of which I've probably mentioned. One <laughs> is take lifestyle, look at your lifestyle and see what you can do. Take positive actions uh, for your bones. But secondly, as I say, if you've got a pituitary condition, get it managed, get it looked after, get it treated. And hopefully that, you're, that, mean, that will be the best you can do for your bones for the future. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so you're from the Royal Osteoporosis Society. Um, do you have kind of services that people can access if they want more information? Yes, we do. We have lots of information, both digitally. We have videos and um, downloadable information, um, but we also have uh, print uh, leaflets, booklets, fact sheets that you can send for. We have a specialist nurse helpline, so very happy to talk to you and discuss your individual situation. And as a charity, we have a membership so you can get regular information. And we have support groups that are continuing to meet digitally during this difficult time. Um, yeah, so, so lots of different um, uh, support and information services on offer. Um, yeah, do get in touch if we can help you further. It's a free helpline. And I think the details will be available with this video. Yeah, great. So we'll have uh, details. Both charities can, of the services both charities provide in the description. Again, the Pituitary Foundation has publications and a helpline and a nurse helpline. So yeah, all those details in the description. Um, great. Well, thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us. Um, I think it's been really useful to especially top tips about how people can look after their bones. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for asking.